All right, we welcome you to another of our features. This time we uh, we continue to feature our uh, Indians in the diaspora, Vincentian Indians in the diaspora, and their contributions to you know the work of of researching their heritage and finding out all about where they came from, and be able to inform us all about you know our roots and and our connections to the motherland, India. Uh, I have with me today, Mr. Noel Thomas. Good day to you, Noel. Hello, hi. Hello, Good to everyone. have you. And you're joining me from the UK, so you're several hours ahead uh, of me. Hence, we're using Zoom to facilitate this uh, exchange. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> All right. So, to know your name is Noel Thomas, tell me a bit about what, you know your occupation. You know where you're residing now, specifically in the UK, and you know your Vincentian connections. Sure, sure. So, so yeah, I, I live in High Wycombe. Um, it's a famous place for for many Vincentians. Um, I think the last the last um, census highlighted that there were over fifteen thousand Vincentians and and um, ancestors or you know descendants of Vincentians if you want living in High Wycombe. So probably outside of St Vincent, there is a lot of <laughs> Vincentians in Wycombe. Um, so so that's where I live. Um, that's where I was actually born. Um, I am a, a an IT engineer by trade, so anything IT from hardware to software, I, I kind of dabble my fingers with that. So, so that's that's kind of my background. Um, in terms of who I am, effectively, so I was actually born here in in um, in High Wycombe. So I'm what's termed as a second generation Vincentian. Um, so up here we have second and third and fourth generation as they go down. So it was actually my parents that came over from St. Vincent back in the in the early 60s. Um, part of what's known as the Windrush generation, where from the 50s onwards, um, a lot of um Caribbean people, not just from St. Vincent, but across the, the region, uh, were invited to come to, to the UK to help out rebuild you know, the UK after the war. So a lot of immigration took place and a lot of our families, a lot of the Indians from St. Vincent came up from the middle of the 50s right through to, you know, the 80s. Um, so my own parents, they came up in in, uh, in the early 60s, uh, 1960s. Um, the usual story, you know, um, the, the elder um, brother will, will come up see how the land lies, as they say, and then send the letter back down to say, yeah, their job's up here, come on up. And then bit by bit, one after the other, they all came up. Um, my own immediate family, um, my mom and dad actually got married up here, up here in the UK. Um, he came up first and then sent for my mom, which is probably a regular thing that happened back in the days. And um, both myself, and I've got one brother, um, Joel, and uh, he lives here in Wickham as well, married with his family. Um, so that's kind of where, where I'm at at the moment with that. Okay. Um, well, so this is Noel and Joel. Interesting. Yes, Tell me yeah. your parents' names and, and, and the occupations, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. So uh, my dad's name is Levi, Levi Thomas. And my mom is Louise uh, Thomas. Louise, she's, she's known as Princey, um, um, Princess Marie. Um, she was a king before... Uh, she got married. Um, they're both retired now, and um, they <laughs> kind of retired up here. You know, they, they did spend some time back in in St. Vincent, but came back up here um, on the grounds, I think, for for medical treatments and the like. Um, so, so they're both retired at, uh, at this stage. Okay, and you mentioned your uh, brother Joel. Do you have any other siblings? No, no, just um, just the two of us, yeah. Um, myself, I've got lots of cousins, however, because, um, <laughs> you know, uh, my family on both sides uh, are quite large. Um, um, and in fact, I, I probably, it'll make sense to show you something. And, and what I wanted to do as well is to give you a little demo of um, some of the work that the foundation is doing in terms of getting resources and making it available to to the wider audience. So, so let me just do a screen share, and, I, and I'll, I'll talk through my own family tree. Sure, um, as, no as problem. Part of that. Okay, so bear with me one second. Um, many of you will be familiar with 
the the Facebook page, um, ran and maintained by the the Heritage Foundation, and and that's where a lot of time is spent on uh, updating from from Lenroy and the rest of the 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 team themselves. You may not be as familiar with the website, but the, there is a the SVG Indian Heritage Foundation website where news items and the likes get updated. Um, effectively, to add to that, um, what I've done is to build another site called the SVG Indian Heritage Foundation Genealogy Site. Now, the idea behind this is to provide specific resources, specific information relating to the genealogy of all or as many of the Indians as possible. Um, Similar in terms of the uh, the official web website, there are featured articles and the like. But I think what everybody will be interested to know is um, the search facilities on there. And there's this little search bar across the top here. And uh, if you click on search, it allows you then to search for whoever is on the system, whoever's in the database. Now, what we've done is to... Um, updates, upload um, multiple trees from different um, providers. And then we've decided to try to have a general tree where all the overlaps can work. Um, but I'll give you a quick example of what's there. And, and I'll use my own name for, for, for searching on that. So provides you with an option and you don't have to have both names. If you only know a first name, you put the first name in and you click on the search. And um, I'm just going to go to my tree here. So the search can be as detailed as, as you want. So you can, if you have the information relating to where they were born, the year they were born, um, the year they died, burial place, if the information is in the system, you can search on that basis for it. So in my own case, uh, when I click on search, it brings up uh, my details. So obviously you've got my name here, uh, my mom and my dad's name and uh, my wife's name and the basic details about my immediate family. Um, what's interesting then would be these tabs across the top here. You're going to see ancestors, descendants, relationships, timelines, family, that sort of inf information. And you'll be familiar with some of these. Um, so the ancestry line will give you a breakdown of your ancestry. Um, in this case, this is me and my mom and dad, um, Levi Thomas and Marie Louise um, Princey Thomas. On my dad's side, um, my granddad was Wilson Thomas, who was married to Elmina Bacchus. And just mousing over them gives you more details, things like, who was uh, the, the the family, the wife and the children. So I could then click on any one of these and, and drill into them. I can have any kind of details I want. All of it is available. Uh, Wilson then, his father was Henry uh, Fanta. Fanta was a nickname. Saki Lily was also a nickname. So we put those details in for those who are familiar with them. And um, Henry was married to uh, Marion um, Paul Barsi Dean and anytime you see a little arrow next to it you can actually go further so Henry's dad was Goku and who was married to Lakutia okay so going back on my mom's side uh, sorry on my on my grandmother's side on my dad's side um, my grandmother Elmina's father was Ridley Bacchus uh, that's probably known from some of the previous conversations we've had. And um, Rebecca uh, Bug Monty, um Bounty, known as Ma Bounty um, for, for, for the older folks. And his father was Ram Balak, um, who, again, a familiar name um, for for a lot of the the, um, the Indians from, from St. Vincent. And on, on my great grandmother's side, uh, William Randall and uh, Mary uh, Williams. Uh, and again, they, they go right back. We, what we've tried to do is to put back as much information right back to, to the ship's records. Now, okay. different ways of looking at it. Um, obviously, this is from left to right. 
A standard way would be the vertical way. This is probably a more familiar way for um, for for people yes. to look at it. And yes, you have yes. a you know a, a kind of a, a more of a tree feature. Now, what the site allows you to do is to make it compact, have it text only, um, and obviously output it to PDF. So the idea would be, if somebody wants to access information, they can actually get to their own family history and print out anything they want to do as a PDF. Um, one of my favorite charts is what's called a fan chart. And I'll just jump onto that there. Um, and this gives you a little bit of a pictorial look. Ah. Um, so this gives me a four generation look um, of me with my mom and dad, with my dad's parents, my mom's parents and grandparents. And you can- so It's adjust- easier to interpret as well that way. Exactly, exactly. And of course, it does allow more details when you click on them. Um, and of course, you can extend the generations as well. So if you have more than four generations, then you can spread it out. But it does get a little complicated with looking at seven generations, as you can see, the oh, wow. it's really worthwhile. Um, but it does allow for you to um, jump across and you know look for names and, and things like that. One of the interesting um, things on here is because all of the information that's in there is is linked via a family connection of some sort, um, you can lo- always look up a, a, a relationship, a connection. Um, a lot of the times, you know, you'll come across somebody and it'll be like, okay, uh, that's your cousin. So, okay, yes, you're your cousin, but how are you related? Who 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 are you? And, and this page will give you a bit of a drill down for it. So person one, I've got it as a me, of course. And if I then say, okay, I'm trying to think of someone now. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna put in one of the previous, um, Gideon Lewis. Uh, I think we've uh, we've heard from him a few. Um, yes. Ago. And you literally just go and click on the calculate. Now the system will go back and um, and hunt for. Oops, let's go and search for them again. Let's just click on that. Let's find him first before we we, we calculate it. So. Um, Okay, and it'll bring up all of the the, the different Gideons that are in the system. So let's look for Gideon Lewis an example, and then you can click on calculate. And then the the other database will go away and then come back with a relationship to Gideon. So this is me on the left hand side. Um, My mom, my mom's dad is, uh, so my granddad and Gideon's granddad uh we're brothers as you ah. can see from the tree here so you have um, third cousins yeah yeah ah. so as it says there the second <laughs> two times cousins of you know so i'm a third cousin of yeah Gideon. so so people that you may not necessarily have come across often you could plug their names in and find out exactly who they are and um how they're related to you um so those sort that sort of information is um is interesting useful and um Sometimes good to know. And yes. um, general information, statistics about the records that we actually hold it on there is, um, I'll click on back to this one. You know, we've got 2,000 plus records in this particular tree. What are the splits between male and female? How many is living? How many families? How many different surnames? The average lifespan. The system is actually able to then do some stats on all of the information that's in there. Of course, there's going to be some information that we don't have on there. So not all of the deaths are available. Not all of the birthdays are, you know, when they were born, where they were born are available. So this is where the family um, could help out where, you know, if you're plugging in information yourself, put in as much information as you know. That includes things like pictures, you know, a little bit of history, notes, anything you want to put in there. If you've got a copy of a birth certificate, they're all 
will be will be held by the system or will be available to, to to fully search. So, bit of a preview, but this will be soon to come out. I, I don't, I can't give you an exact date, but as part of the the work that the foundation is doing to try to provide more resources for everyone. Awesome. So I, I guess I'll skip over the um, question about your aunts and uncles because we pretty much saw a demonstration of who your all your relatives were there. Um, but are you aware as to where your grandparents lived um, in St. Vincent? Yeah, so so my parents come from Calder primarily and uh, my grandparents were from originally when they came over on the uh, when the great grandparents came over they came over and they were worked on the the Argyle estate. Um, so from Argyle, they actually moved to Calder and Acres primarily. Um, so really, both sides of the family um, lived either in Acres or in Calder, and and we know them as top Calder or bottom Calder. A lot of the bottom Calder were the Bullocks and the, uh, and, the and the like. The top Calder was more of the Kings, I suppose. My grandparents um, lived there. Um, I mean, I went back to, as I was born, I was born here in the UK, of course, and um, my mom took um, took me back for the first time back in in, in the early 80s, 81, is the first time I went back to St. Vincent, and a um, bit of a, you know, how, how do you put it, in at the deep end, if you want, so uh, I, I've gone to a, in my view, a brand new place, never been to before, Um it was myself, um, my mom, and a cousin of mine, and we went back and we stayed in my my grandparents' house. And I'm used to, you know, a, a, a couple of you know floors on a house with a, a family of four. And and I go back there, and they said, "Oh, you'll be staying with your cousins." And I said, "Okay, that sounds good." Um, and then I turn up there, and I go into and says. You'll be in the back bedroom, and I go in the back bedroom, and and there's like four of my cousins on the bed already. It's like, okay, so where am I sleeping? So, <laughs> but that was just normal for it, and uh, <laughs> that was my kind of in at the deep end. But honestly, from that point on, I actually fell in love with the place, and I, you know, it, all of a sudden it was a case of yes, I really do want to know my past and my heritage, and you know, what's this whole story about? Because up until that point, we had very limited understanding if you want of of the of the time um we would meet up at christmas most of the time most of the family will meet up at christmas around each of each of each, each other's houses and that's where i meet my cousins and my aunts and my uncles some of them haven't met for a long time we'll meet up over christmas and and we'll get chatting about the old times that's that's kind of where some of the stories start to come out and um, it was actually my cousin Venice, um, one of my, my first cousin, who she would be saying, "Well, you are related to this person, and you're related to that person, and this is your cousin, and 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 this is your great grandmother," and and that kind of got me interested in this whole idea of, well, okay, who are my family, and um, and that made me want to, okay, let's let's start digging myself, and really since that point, I've been researching, I've been trying to dig a little deeper in terms of trying to understand, trying to find out where they came from. Um, I think um, a lot of you through these interviews, they, you've got a good history of some of the, the, the very earlier generations. So uh, people like Rambo, like um, How Lesser, um, these, these guys have been talked about before. Not so much has been talked about my dad's side of the family, which is the Thomases. So, um, I decided I, I'm going to go hunting for, for that information. Um, and what was interesting to know was um, there was a group of them that came across on, on the ship Newcastle in 1867. Um, Twelve of them, actually. So it was a whole family group. There was a, um, a guy named Sanka and his wife, Radna, and and their two kids, Gokul and Takudas. So Go who um, was my great great grandfather on my dad's side? So he was the first, if you want, of the Thomases of Calder. So he came across when he was eight years old when he came with his his mom and dad. But it wasn't just his mom and dad that came over. So um, his dad had two sisters that came with him, 
and his wife, Radna, had two brothers that came with her. And one of the brothers was married to Sankar's sister. So it's a proper little family group that um, that came over. What was interesting was that Sankar and Radna, they uh, were assigned to the Argyle estate. So the four of them, so the mother and father and the two kids, they stayed at the Argyle estate. Um, but uh, Varuth, which is the brother of Radna, and his wife and two kids, um, they are named Luxu and Mongola. Um, they went to the Richmond estate along with one of the sisters of Sankar and and um, her husband. So six of them actually went to the Richmond estate. And then the other sister of the Sankar, uh, a, a, a lady named Neymar, she and her husband went to the Union estate. So while we have a real detailed set of information about the Thomases that stayed in Calder under Gokul, the the aunts and uncles, if you want, that went to the other states, not a lot is known, at least by me. So if there's anybody out there who recognized some of those names and saying, well, actually, that's part of my history, uh, feel free to get in touch with me or, or, or via the, the foundation and let's see if we can link up and connect the two. I may well have lots of relatives who came out of um, the Richmond estate or the Union estate and uh, and their family to me, which I really don't know. Um, but that's the, the beauty of having to, to, to do some research and look back in the past. Um, that whole family, that, that, um, that whole group of 12, they came from a little village in um the, the record show was West Bengal, but it's now Jarkland in in India. And it's a little village just on the northern border of the river there. So we we're able to track back to where the village was. I think my next visit will be to to go and pay a uh, pay a little visit there to see if I, I, I meet any you know current connections there. That'll be good. Um but uh that's uh, one of these days maybe. Mm. All right, so quite quite an interesting bit there from you in terms of your experiences. Um, what I want to ask you, you mentioned that you came home in the 19, early 1980s. Um, and what was that like for you to experience, you know, St. Vincent as a different place? I know you mentioned about your cousins, but comparing that to the life you had grown accustomed to in, in the UK as a second generation Vincentian of Indian descent. What was that like for yeah. you? It was very strange, but at the same time, a little comforting. Um, the, the, the story I remember most, I mean, I jumped on a plane with, with, with my mom and my cousin, and I landed in St. Vincent, and it was raining. And this is where, you know, it was the, the old airport. It wasn't Argyle. It was um, yeah. at Arnersville. And then they said, oh, get in my uncle's truck, and we'll go back up to Calder. And um, for those who know the route from, from there, you, you know, you're going up up these little mountainous roads. To me, it was mountainous. It was raining. It was muddy. It was bumpy. It was like, send me back straight away. I don't want to be here at all. It was like, <laughs> no way. Um, and of course, it was nighttime. So it was the morning when I woke up and I looked out the window and I saw the beauty of, of St. Vincent. And it really was at that point I thought, oh, I'm, I'm loving this place. But it was to is a different lifestyle, totally different, you know, uh, from having the breakfast in the morning where the kitchen was downstairs, half outside, half inside. And it was like, I'm used to going into a kitchen, turning on the stove, but the stove was a bit of a, you know, you have a little um, coal fire or a, a colour gas um, burner and, mm -hmm. and you, you have to wait your turn to get, if you wanted something warm, Um Somebody, one of the, the cousins will be out getting the milk from the cow. So it's, it's just totally foreign to me. <laughs> I, I, that's all I can say. It's totally foreign. But the time I was there, and I, I spent I spent a month in, in that, that very first visit, I decided at that time that it's somewhere where I could easily live. And, and, it's, and I decided to do so. So kind of when I was in my early 20s, I made a decision to move back and actually... Uh, came back, to, went back to St. Vincent and lived there for, for 12 years, just under 12 years. So I spent a good chunk there 
really getting to know the people, the place, and and the beauty of the of, of it all. So hmm. uh, I never knew my my granddad on my dad's side, but I did get to meet my grand granddad and grandmother on my mom's side, uh, which I'm grateful for. And um, and of course, many cousins of all types and uh, uh, varieties, uh, people that. Uh, I never knew, you know, I'd be walking down um, in that three colder, going down towards where the post office is down that side for those who know. And, and you know, they will say, oh, that's your cousin there. That's your, your, your uncle, nieces, aunt, or whatever it is. And I'm going, <laughs> okay, all right. I have no idea who these people are, but it was it was an actual joy to to, to start meeting a lot of these people over the, over the years. Great, and it's great that you can make those connections. So, do you plan to to come home and rekindle some of those connections again soon? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the intentions were when I came back up here, not to say too long, but well, too long has actually gone into a, over a decade now. But yeah, the plans are to to again head back down and uh, to make it a regular visit at, at the very least. Um, keep that connection going. Um, I think one of the difficulties are is that the older folks are beginning to die out now and. Um, more and more, um, um, you know, it's it's getting less and less of a connection if you want to to St. Vincent, and and I want to try to maintain that connection as long as we can, and mm-hmm. to, to keep it going. I mean, there is a there is a strong connection between High Wycombe especially and St. Vincent, um, mm-hmm. but as a di- as the generations go on, more and more of the younger generation know less and you know they they have less and less knowledge about St. Vincent and the Grenadines and and the family history. You know, yes. and it's one of the things, one of the challenges I think we have, and one of the one of the areas that I want to try to 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 push in terms of um, getting them to understand the culture, the history, where you came from, and, and all of that. Um, if I could get some of that knowledge passed on, all the better. Great. All right, and and I know you're doing great work in making all of those connections with what you just demonstrated to us. Now, as, as a question I missed earlier, I was to ask you about your your children, if you do have children, and yeah. and you know, uh, you know, a bit about them. One one young one one young child, uh, Liam. Uh, he's only uh, uh, just over two now, so very very young. Born born under lockdown, so uh, <laughs> not used to a lot of people because there's a time when you know everybody yes. was either wearing a mask or. Or not not going outside. So just just the one um, um, child, and um, uh, he's very young. Man. Okay, all right. Now I know that you may have had the opportunity to um, to look at the other interviews that we did, and and I want to get your feedback because a lot of information was shared between those in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. Those that we were able to share, um, despite of the challenges with COVID and all of that. Uh, what are your impressions of those interviews? I, I think they're they're absolutely valuable. Um, you know, sometimes we question the accuracy of some of the, the what people remember, but I think that's all the more wealth for it because everybody has a slightly different perspective, depends on how they've grown up. Um, but what they talk about and and what they remember, especially the good times and the bad times, I think is valuable information, is valuable um, history that without them talking about it without just remembering those things we lose that quite easily um it's a surprise for me that we did lose a lot of the indian history the, the indian kind of culture in the very early days i mean i know uh, you know quite a few of them talked about you know being christianized within the first or second generation that came down and 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 while while myself i'm a christian and and i understand that person but you know, perspective. It is a shame that a lot of that culture has been lost, um, because that's part of who we are, and that's where we've come from. And and um, I think those interviews are a way to to remind us and to give us a little bit of a background. And um, you know, you, you you're it's a bit, a bit like a puzzle, really. Everybody's got a little piece of the story in it, and the more pieces of the story we can have, the more we could. Put it together and um, build a bigger, better, more complete picture of, you know, the indentured servants who came from India over 
you know, eight boatloads over a, a period of time and how they survived, how they lived, um, and how they live in now. I think that's a mm -hmm. really important thing for us right. to pass on. Well, I wouldn't ask you if you're aware of the foundation and its work because you're very much part of the foundation. But in terms of what you see as the outlook as to where we can go as a foundation, and I say we because you're part and parcel of the foundation and, and, and what the work that is ongoing, uh, where do you see us heading into the future and continuing this type of work? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there, there's two parts to that, I think. Um, in St. Vincent and the Grand Indians directly, I think more work needs to be done in terms of building some sort of a permanent heritage, uh, whether that's a museum or whether that's a, thing, um, a repository for all of the old bits and pieces that may have been collected over the years. I think that's a good thing. And obviously the continuance of relating the stories, telling the history, um, broadening that out to as, as, as wide an audience and as permanent an audience as possible. So having recognition for things like Argyle being one of the prominent places where they've run, and, and, and also a lot of the other estates as well. I mean, I think a lot of work has been done with, you know, kind of my immediate family, the the, the Bacchuses, the Bullocks, the Kings, the Thomases, the Williams. But there were lots of other Indians who came across on, on the ships. And I think if we could put more effort into finding out about those guys and, you know, whether they intermarried with, with the, the larger um, people groups or whether they went back or whether they went to different islands, I think there's still a lot of work that can be done from that perspective. Um, okay. outside of St. Vincent, I think there's a lot of work to be done. So each of the diasporas, um, you know, the US, the ca Canada, um, the UK, there's large groups of Vincentians there and, and, and that connection needs to be a lot stronger with our heritage, with our history. Um, because, you know, as I said before, my own cousins, my own things, we speak to them and it's literally a case of, well, they don't really know, you know, they like their fish and chips, but, you know, ask them about some roti and some dal and what you did and banana leaves, they have no clue. Um, you ask them about, well, you know, what school did your grandparents go to? Uh, what was it like at school there? No idea. They've got literally no idea. So I think there's even more work to be done outside of, of that, and the foundation could certainly help with, with providing... Um, ways and means to be able to do that in the different countries. All right. And before we wrap up, we have just a few minutes on our counter remaining. Sure. Uh, anything you'd like to add? I know you shared quite a lot in terms of the family history and all of that, but anything that we missed along the way that you'd like to add as we close? Um, probably just one thing. So uh, this is probably unique to the diaspora. Um, but their own history is also interesting. And I think it, we could push some of that history back to being part of the, the Indian heritage as well. So, so when we kind of got together at Christmas with all the rest of the family, some of the stories that were told was of their first um, arrival in, in the UK for, for my own family, you know, that the hardships they went through. Um, examples like, you know, when they all came up, they all ended up at a, a house uh, in High Wycombe, Everybody will know it is 155 Dashwood. You know, you say that across the family and everybody knows it because mm -hmm. that one house hosted over 25 people at the same time. So as and when they came up from, to, from St. Vincent, they'll go into the house and they had shifts. So those who worked the night shift will sleep in the day. Those who worked the day shift will sleep in the night. But it was all in the same house and on the floor. So the, the living room, the front room became the bedroom. And those kind of stories hung with us, and I think they can all be part of that same rich storytelling, if you want. Um, mm -hmm. What happened when they left St. Vincent to the new country, in our case, to the motherland? How did they survive? You know, things like that. Um, they left. Another example would have been when um, my, my dad came up in 1960, my mom came up in 62, and in 1963, they had what they call was the big freeze 
you know, three months of snow and ice in England, um, never before seen, never seen since then. And these guys come up with their suits and tie and their grip, <laughs> as they would call them. And they've ended up in, you know, waist high with snow. How do you survive? How do you cope with that? Mm. Um, lots of stories to be told there. And I think that's also a rich vein of information that, that can be shared. All right. Well, as you're aware, this will be packaged and uploaded to our platforms. And I hope this is okay with you so that we can share this with all of our yeah. other followers as well. Absolutely. And I just wish to thank you as well for the, the time spent in, in bringing all, all of this together for, for showing us a demo of, of how you can look up your ancestry and make your connections with your family, etc. And we appreciate you. Best wishes for you. We know we're heading into the season, um, yeah. the Christmas season yeah. at, at the time of this recording. And we do hope that uh, uh, you have a, a, a blessed one, you and your family, health and he health and strength to your advantage into the new year. Thank you very much. And, and to you as well. I mean, you, you're doing a great job with the foundation. Um, and I, I know the these interviews take time and effort. And, you know, they're not just the interviews, it's the editing and the, yes. and the, 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 the all the bits behind the scenes. So yes. thank you for all of the work that you, you're doing as well and, and the rest of the foundation as well. I appreciate it. Have a good one and thanks again. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.